what does it mean to have architecture uh, perform the unexpected? It's a question uh, for you, but I know, like, but I, I want to <laughs> hear what he has to say about it. Actually, uh, yeah, I know it's a well, question I think, for me. Well, uh, I think architecture is the place of possibility. Mm -hmm. So I think architecture, I mean, great architecture allows for anything to happen in it. In, in the affordable housing I did in Brooklyn, the street facades are very designed. And then in the back, there are these alleys for parking cars. And uh, it turns out the back, people have like, customized the yards and they've made it their own. And so everyone has their backyard and that's really the place where people gather and uh, interact together and they've kind of made their own uh, kind of creative places. Architecture is an interesting discipline because it's, it's nothing without the person who experiences it, mm -hmm. right? So right. this space doesn't mean anything until someone's inside of it experiencing it and that's part of the um, perhaps the the thing that keeps us grounded, you know, is thinking about. It's not about us or what we what we want to create. It's really about who and how uh, we'll experience it. But then there's also this term, uh, star architects. Wow. <laughs> um, well, I think Daniel's point is good because uh, star architecture, at some level, is about the cult of the personality of the architect, and yet the architect knows that it's really not about themselves, it's about what they're doing for others and cr spaces that they're creating. So I think it's been good in the sense of like bringing architecture the, to the public uh, awareness. <laughs> I just, you know. <laughs> well, speaking of star architecture. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Some things. Uh, <laughs> you know, is this one of your room? Uh, I had nothing to do with this. But you know what's so funny? When I hear the term star architect, yes. I think there's like a, a second definition that's like super awesome too, which is um, the study of those who align the stars for themselves. You know what I mean? Yes. That's a new definition for a star architect right. to me. I think this notion of this kind of cult of personality that you're talking about, though, there are certain architects that have used it to sort of ill, Ill purpose and have kind of done, you know, bad things with it, but there are others who their entire world becomes part of, you know, mm -hmm. what they do. So it's not just um, the things that they make, but people's experience in some ways of, of, um, of their, their buildings is influenced by who they are, right, and their other interests. And this is kind of, I mean, it has much more to do with other disciplines like popular music or, um, maybe even more within the art world, there's this kind of notion that the person is as important as the work. We know that you're like super outspoken about Hurricane Sandy and uh, some of the issues with the shorelines and that you've had some solutions. What are some of the measures that you think should be taken? Well, I think uh, as in Florida, there are these water levels that are known that things can flood up to. and. I think all the mechanical and electrical systems have to be brought above that level instead of in the basement where they flood so that people can continue living in these in the apartments that are there and the other is just not to build where it's where one shouldn't really in these zones that will flood but we also live in a day and age where people just don't take things very seriously until the last minute so oh, look at Pompeii it was destroyed 2,000 years ago, and they have people living there now. Yeah. So what do you think should be done, though? Well, I think, uh, I mean, now that we know those areas that are very vulnerable, we have to protect those. And then I, I'm not against some kind of big dam, really, to keep the water back like they do in London or Rotterdam. Well, you know, we maybe... actually could, we could gain some power that way, too. Yeah, that's right. It could be kind of a hydraulic thing. They're even doing that in Venice. Well, where would they put it? Oh, like, like the by, the Verona, of the harbor? by the Verrazano Bridge. Yeah. How do you see quality design remaining accessible for those people who can't afford expensive lofts and snow architecture? Now, me personally, I love this conversation because I think that, like, you know, if you're building a mobile home, it can be a terrible, trashy mobile home or it can be, like, next level and super efficient. You could put some thought into it, um, like what you guys are doing in Brooklyn, and, like, change the world. I personally feel like, you know, design is only as good as the thought you put into it. It's not necessarily always always about the materials. 
Do well, I also do work is? for a group called Common Ground, okay. who does housing for formerly homeless. And they've emphasized design in all of the buildings that they've built in the last five or six years. So they hire better architects. They don't look like homeless housing. They look like, like Cayenne condos or something. That, mm -hmm. And they become landmarks for the community that have actually helped increase the values of the neighboring uh, area. So uh, I think design should be applied across the board. So mm -hmm. it's not simply limited to those who have the means, but to every level of society. Daniel, you define your work in dimensions. Can you explain that? I make small drawings. I make objects, I make sculpture, I make spaces, I make stage designs. So I started to think about obviously the two-dimensional work as these things that, that exists flat, it's small, it's something that I normally do strictly by myself. Almost every other discipline that I work in is about uh, sort of engaging other people. So the sculpture is three-dimensional. And then the performative work and the architecture, I think of almost as, you know, in the fourth dimension. Mm. So it's really about time. It's really about experience. You walk through the door. What's the first thing that you experience? Then you get to the next space. Then you're in the bathroom. How does it feel? You know, what's the light like? So the, like, the fourth yeah, dimension is kind of time, I guess. Well, well dance and architecture are very similar. Because mm -hmm. they're, as you said, it's moving through space. Mm -hmm. And the dancers themselves create space with mm -hmm. their bodies. Mm -hmm. And so that whole kind of intersection of dance, movement, architecture, space, it's, uh, it's amazing. I mean, actually, architecture just leads into everything. Yeah. And everything comes back to architecture. But maybe that's an architect speaking. What are each of you chasing? <laughs> I mean, you know, I, my interest in, in making form and, and making these things is, is based on a, a desire to kind of understand these things and to have a different sort of sense about them. So constantly driven to be sort of reinventing something or so much of the practice in the studio is really about play, you know. Within the architecture studio, we'll sometimes bring in, you know, a number of different materials and objects, you know, say like, what can this, what can this object do that it's not supposed to do? There are these kind of objects that have a sort of pot inherent potential within them. I think I'm chasing a dream of, you know, some, just to create something that is so incredible. I mean, I, I still don't think I've created something that really expresses everything that I want to. So there's always something wrong, but I'm, trying to constantly get something that's closer to that perfect vision. And you never end up getting there. You anyways. never get there, but I think you have to you stop it's always in that the cool thing. Right. <laughs> you never get there. The payoff is the process. Yes. What do you see yourself in 20 years? Oh, 20 years. Probably living in Miami here. <laughs> in I my agree. apartment. I agree. <laughs> I'll come back to right. And you? I love that answer by the way. <laughs> Probably won't be in Miami. <laughs> I grew up here, so it's kind of nice to get out of it and come back. But I don't know, the studio is developing in a really interesting way, and I sort of n could have never thought that it would, that I would be involved in these different disciplines. I was always interested in architecture, but theater has been, and stage has been something sort of really interesting for me to, to become engaged with. So I'm sure the studio practice will grow, and hopefully I can continue in these different sort of disciplines and perhaps. Um, you know, expand my, my interests. But no Miami. I come back here, you know, every year, I see my parents, I come back here for the art fair. You'll be back. Yeah, <laughs> I know you love it here. Yeah. Miami beckons. Yeah, it, it does. I'm good, man. This, was, this has been very educational for me, very informative, and, you know, something for me to learn. And if I'm learning, I know that my viewers are learning. So that's like the most important thing. It's about artists, and that's why it's called Artist Talk, because that's what I want to do. Well, thank you for inviting us. Yeah, yeah, my pleasure. Cool, man. Thank you guys so much for being sure. here. Sure. Pharrell Williams here with Artist Talk. Beware, I'm here with the one and only Tony Hawk. I'll do this at all costs, even if I get hurt. You've got to be unafraid of the winter to know that you'll reach the summer. People said I cheated because I ollied into my airs. I was like, yeah! That's how you get hype. We woke up every day trying to find yeah. like a mini half somewhere. Right. The high that, that I go for is 
when I land something new. That's not really selling out. That's called being successful and being right. a pioneer. I loved all the stuff I did. I really did. And I'm still happy over here on this, on this radius. <laughs> oh yeah. Check it out. Don't miss any episodes or you'll miss things like this.